two million dollars in worlds. I, I think that is pretty, pretty awesome. But still, I want to bring out a big thank you to the teams that put going in LCS order. If you guys don't know what LCS orders, it's top, jungler, mid, ADC, and support. These teams were gracious enough. Now that we actually have four spectator slots, they were actually gracious enough to get in that order. It helps out the fans. It helps out the uh casters it just it makes everyone's life a lot easier so i want to thank you to the teams for actually definitely working with the casters and the production crew of thunderdog esports and making everyone's life a little bit easier and we're, we might see a level one shenanigans eddie itches oh and the tumble actually into the wall there with the spider eddie skitter the spider it's spider I'm um, not quite sure why he placed the ward there. So Yasuo on Elise there. Uh, a took Trinket first. We'll see if he takes this moment to back and go get Sweeper. Typically, that's what the professional Elise players are doing because you start W on Elise, so you don't need the Trinket to uh, safely face check brushes. It also helps with her early gank potential path. But it doesn't look like he's going to back. It looks like he's going to start his enemy red buff. As far as that ward is concerned, though, he put it specifically in the pit. Um, I guess just trying to determine where Fiddlesticks is starting. But he could have determined that by seeing how late the bottom lane would get to lane. Like, it's very easy to tell what, what side the junglers start on uh, due to who's leashing him. Of course. And just like that ward over the wall to actually get some vision on that red buff, it allows you to see the enemy jungler, where he's at, and really just try to play a little bit of mind games. Say, if he actually does um, go to his red buff, at least could probably go take a wolf camp. But see, the, the other thing that's really curious to me is, so she's mirroring um, Fiddlesticks' jungle path, which makes me think that she's trying to find a counter gank with the Fiddlesticks, uh, as opposed to trying to beat him, because uh, Elise is going to jungle faster than Fiddlesticks is. So why would she, you know, he's going to start blue buff, so I'm going to start red to mirror his motions, as opposed to starting her blue and then trying to challenge him on his, uh, his red. And with that already in top lane, getting a little bit harassed out by Ragnaros. Ragnaroks. I, I like rocks. to say I like to say Ragnaros because it reminds it's me like of like one, Well, it reminds me because I played World of Warcraft for eight years. It was like one of the end game bosses. And here we go, that bottom sustain lane with the Nami W. Um, you also have the range disadvantage for Vayne. Uh, effectively, every time Dean has his E off of cooldown, he should walk up and he should burn it on Eddie. Or, you know, he can just sit there and take the Ignite from Thresh. And that is true, and they're actually going to oh, have to blow... Oh, heal the Ignite. Yeah, they're going to have to blow the Summoner heal. I think he popped it a little bit too early. Especially... Oh, he definitely did. Lost the, uh, lost the Grievous Wounds to Ooh, it. Ooh, and that... Death Sentence and Frey goes out. Misto gun. But Eddie is actually going to flash out. Still has repel. Still has repel. And there we go. Is going to there actually flash for the first blood going on to it. So first blood is going to go in favor of Team Juanito going up against these Jose and Laura. I mean, a great start for, I think, a couple of, like, misplays. But still, good start for Team Juanito considering they did last time they faced they did lose and again it goes back to the fact they knew that elise was starting red buff because tristana and nami didn't leash for her so they knew that the gank could happen bottom around that 330 to 350 mark which it did fantastic job from yasuo to get in there uh almost turned into a misplay like you said the fact that miss stepped forward and started to go hard on eddie almost telegraphing the uh telegraphing the gank that was incoming and the fact that there was a huge horde of minions right there on the side of blue team so got a little bit lucky right there but very nice gank and that is true fiddle trying to come in for a gank in middle but is going to actually back off couldn't couldn't get it around but still i i, I don't think that yasuo irl really needed to flash for that kill because i vein was so low at that time i think the spiralings would have killed her off I, uh, I don't know. The, the He didn't want to repel for it because he wanted to be able to drop the tower aggro. He was still relatively low health, and you saw that he perfectly timed his repel to dodge the shot that went down. Uh, it, it would have been closer. Obviously, burning the flash for the first blood in that case, especially to really give the swing of power to his bot lane, it's never going to uh, to hurt him. I, I think it wasn't so much you know concern for the kill as opposed to concern for his own health. Um, 
because you they knew that fiddlesticks also started on his blue buff so they didn't want to take too much unnecessary damage in a dive by misusing cooldowns if if fiddles would be around for a counter gank of course and that that when you picked up the first blood you can definitely call that work Ah, uh, fancy footwork in that mid lane, and yet she still hits the Q. the Q. So, good job from, um, from Fire to recognize, hey, if he's gonna dash around, I'm literally just gonna wait for him to stop moving, and leave this here waiting for him. Those are sick dance moves, though. Look at those dashes. Ooh, Slack Jagger. Haha. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the bot lane, another Ooh. counter gank being set up. And there we go, Yasuo R.I.L. coming in. Mistral got to take a lot of damage, and they're actually going to flash Night Fox going out, but the Coon Coon does land, and that is going to be a kill. That is going to be another kill for Dean coming down. So first blood going towards Elise, Yasso, and then actually giving up the kill to his AD carry Dean, which still, that late game power, and this could turn very ugly real fast if Dean can actually pick up a couple more kills. You're absolutely right right there, Klysis. Um The fact of the matter is is that both these AD carries are hyper carries, but you do not want Tristan to get ahead. She has everything on her kit and her composition. Oh, but hold Ooh, on a second. And the dragon's dragon descent the up in the top lane and is actually going to be changing around. They're going to have to watch it because of the simple fact like that dragon descent going on to it is going to start backing away. So dragon descent we used was going to be down for at least a couple more minutes. And really... Uh, ultimate that was blown. I I think that it could have been used in a better situation, but now it's actually going to be using the E coming out from it and just putting some poke down coming from Rag, Rag, Rag. I, I'm going to call him Rag. Ragnarok. Ragnarok. It means apocalypse. Wait. It's like Soul Leader. Rag. It, it wasn't that the. It's the it's the bringer of the apocalypse. Oh God. <laughs> Still, like the mini Ragnarok from Soul Leader, so adorable. Or like the ship from Final Fantasy VIII. Right? But anyway, back to League of Legends, because <laughs> we like to get distracted here at Thunderdog Esports. I'm distracted all the time. Of course. But that, like, I, we're awesome I want to go like back that. to the gank, though. Just really quick bottom, because Yasuo has, or Yasuo IRL has, has looked really impressive. Um... He actually turned spider for a second before he initiated the gank. And the reason... Oh, Ooh, and in the top lane, the cocoon does land. Yasuo IRL has just been on point with those cocoons and making plays with them. And with that, that's going to be 2-0 and oh at least right now. And the ball is actually going to pick up Miss, uh, Eddie's and both Mr. Gun and Dean are going to have to back off. And that's kind of the the number one difference between Fiddlesticks and um, and Elise here. Fiddlesticks is now level six. Did he crow storm over the back of the dragon pit? I did not see it, but it looks like he's just trying to go after dragon, trying to solo it right now. He and... crow stormed over the back of the pit. <laughs> I guess he doesn't want the he, he doesn't want a gank. He wants the dragon. There, and the first dragon actually going down at 8.38, so that really early dragon, and there he's actually going to get spot out by that pink ward, but still Tristana is going to hop out of the way just in case, didn't want to get hit by that, didn't want to get hit by that fear. So, translates his, uh, his lack of gank pressure into early global gold in, in the form of the dragon, of course, yeah, so he's going to pick up that ward here in a second. Uh, lead is still in favor uh, of purple team here. We'll see if they're able to do anything, yet, particularly in the bottom side and in the jungle. So um, typically you don't want a lot of your gold on the jungle. You'd like to keep that gold in the lane to help them with the 1v1 matchup. Although if Yasuo IRL keeps transitioning his early gold advantage into snowballing lanes, it it's fantastic. If he were to just take that gold, say on like a flare or on a fiddlesticks, and return to his jungle never to be seen again, it, it could spell disaster for his team. But right now, definitely the hard carry. And he does have enough gold to actually, because with those, with the first blood and also picking up the third kill of the game, he has enough gold to go back and get his jungle item. I think that's the one most essential items coming down especially for a jungler, is that gold income item. The faster you can get it, the more gold you will earn while farming through the jungle. 
It's also a CDR based uh, item, taking the Fiendish Codex right there. So it is going to help him get off those cocoons faster. Although, was well, a recent nerf to cocoon. The width on it, I believe, got hit by like 10. I think it went from 75 to 55. Still, Maybe nonetheless, Yasuo IRL has just been on point with those cocoons. Now see him taking advantage in the mid lane. Um, and unfortunately, there's nothing that Cool can really do about it since he was in base buying. So it's not like he can see, okay, Yasuo IRL is currently matched up against the, uh, the real Yasuo in this game. And I can, you know, gank a lane without fear of counter gank or go and take a, oh, an objective from him. But the bottom lane, Eddie actually getting caught by the bubble and taking a lot of damage from Tristana's rocket drum. A little bit of trade right there. And again, it just comes down to the fact that you're against a sustain lane um, versus a non sustain lane. Tristana is incredibly safe. Rocket jump, buster shot, everything in between. Sustained so bottom lanes. I, I'm gonna have to say, like, the bottom lane, whoever has the more sustain, in most parts, will actually come out better and on top. Well, there's typically a trinity um, of basic play style. So it's poke, sustain, and hard engage. So sustain is going to be beat poke. Poke is going to beat um, hard engage, and hard engage is going to beat sustain. And they technically have the tools to hard engage if a death sentence lands. But what they're doing is they're playing the lane because Tristana has explosive shot. She's able to keep the lane push, which means that there's more minions in front of uh, Night Fox there for him to miss the death sentence effectively. So it it's just a very creative way and they're not being punished by it. Oh, but in the top lane, Ragnaros, Ragnarok is going to actually pop himself up with Wild Grove and the Cocoon did land on Kemix, but it is not going to be enough. Will it actually be enough? Yasuo IRL is going to flash and actually die for it. Missing the cocoon. The one cocoon that didn't matter. He did not make it. Uh, big thing with uh, Demonster right there. I'm just going to call him Demon. I don't want to mispronounce his name. Uh, Demon in the mid lane. He recognized that, again, Yasuo IRL committed top lane to the tower dive. He knew exactly where the jungle was, so he knew that there wasn't going to be a counter gank, and he was able to go ham. The fact that he had the information, uh, and then he immediately punished with it, was the, the correct call. Well, with that, actually, there is going to be a red buff steal coming out from that. And actually having to force... Elise actually having to recall. That was a perfect, well-timed red buff steal. Had to, uh, had to get something right there. Again, just using that information, although he's getting a little greedy going for these, these raids. He'll just barely miss it, but simply because Yasuo IRL took some funky pathing. I think he was trying to leash some EXP uh, off of the, um, the mid-wave, but... So one thing I do want to mention, even though Elise is 201, Fiddle has a 20 plus farm actually keeping up in gold. And I think at this rate, he's doing really good. But the cocoon, oh, and the wind wall, just in the nick of time from that stun. Oh, here Pro comes storm, the, uh... though. Oh, I'm not going to go anywhere as Yasuo IRL is g finally going to go down. For the first, his first death of the game, and a very nice crow storm. So Yasuo has made work across uh, pretty much every single lane, but unfortunately his team is failing to utilize the strength that he's given them. And now in the Ooh, mid lane, and the last breath coming down, Fire Thorns is gonna drop to the blade of Yasuo. Again, that Yasuo Cinder matchup is not one that Cinder likes, and now in the top lane, Chemix. Looking at riding the rocks. And with that, the shield is going to go down, and it's just a little bit too tanky. Doesn't have Dragon Descent available either, so both of them should be fine. Um, they are now decently warded for enemy junglers. That is true. So, Dragon is live right now, and it looks like these hoes ain't Laura is going after him. But Eddie Inches is going to get dropped. From Tristana, and that rocket jump, that rocket jump is just overpowered right now, but still, coming from it, 
Team Juanito is trying to actually secure that dragon right now. That was a very bad call coming out from these Jose and Laura and actually could cost them the dragon right now. They don't have Cross Storm available. They are not in position for a smite still. It's going to be a death sentence. Eh, try Smita so miss. Uh, that said, they did commit the teleport there, so we'll see if Chemex is able to trade the global objective of top for the global objective of dragon. So still a, a fairly even trade in favor of blue side. At the same time, I think I do believe that was a very, um, not a bad call, but a miscommunication coming out from these hoes ain't Laura, because that did cost them a dragon, even though they took the first tower, uh, apologize, second tower of the game. Um, I, I think it was just miscommunication on the team's part. Well, uh, misuse of cooldowns, we'll see. Uh, as far as gold is, is considered, though, they're still in uh, the spot that they want to be, so not much loss from losing the dragon. We do see Crowstorm back up now, though. See if they maybe have some uh, Lantern ganks in store. I would love to see a Crowstorm charged up onto Lantern. Yep, and there, there we goes. go. Crowstorm is going to come out. The fear is going to go down. Hopefully the silence does. But the Tsunami Wave and Mistral Gun's going to get feared up. And there he goes. He's going to drop as Dean is now running for his life. And is Eddie going to tower dive? No. Now in the weights, in, off to the corner, Elise is there. So just in case they did tower dive, Elise was there to follow up. A lot expended for that gank. Um, unfortunately for Mist, the tidal wave was uh, not the most perfect it could have been. Didn't land on Cool and knock him up, which he was able to get that fear there and lock her up. But it was pretty much every single flash, every single ultimate expended right there. And with that, Ragnarok actually take a little bit of damage. Burnout is burning him. As Kinnix is still going, Dragon's Descent is going to go, but Wild Growth is going to knock him up. It is just kind of staring. Both of them are staring down the barrel of a gun. Has to be careful. I'm actually really surprised that um, Chemex is doing so much damage with the Sunfire Cape. Because, I mean, you, you have to think he didn't even go um, magic resistance. But kind of a curious build coming out from, from Lulu Top to go straight Athene's right off the bat. Um, especially for how much damage he's, he's sustaining here. I'm going to have to say I understand why Shivana, uh, why Kenex is going um, the extra damage um, along with Vamp Scepter to go into uh, Blade Oops. of the Ruin King and also Sunfire for the extra basically adding on to the burnout because you have that passive uh, passive uh, MR coming out from Dragon's Ascent and even in not even in Dragon form. It, it tells me that uh, Ragnarok is misplaying the lane and he's not playing the poke. Again, you talk about hard engage versus poke. Shavana, uh, she has hard engage as far as, you know, the Dragon Descent getting onto you, but she doesn't have any CC. So there's no reason for Ragnarok. There, there's nothing for Ragnarok to get locked down and forced to fight him. And that's effectively what's happening. It's, it's a ranged character with a speed up that's losing to a melee character. And on the other side, Tsunami Wave is actually going to knock up Eddie. Will it actually be enough? No, Dean actually gets going to get locked up. And oh. no, no! He is actually going to misplay that. And he's actually going to target the minion instead. And now, Misto Gun is not in a good position right now. If the Q does land, and it does, the sentence that is going to be the lockup and kill for Eddie. Uh, you called it effectively a misplay from Dean right there. Flash forward. I don't know if it was an A click issue, but targeted the creeps as opposed to Eddie. Wasn't able to get the uh, the combo off to kill Vayne and get the reset for the rocket jump out of tower range. It gets punished hard for it. Now Eddie back in the game. I do believe that it was a auto attack mistake because usually when you do flash like that, it's gonna target the nearest one if you have um, auto attack on. But that said, still, also the uh, the oh ship rush. Oh no, Yasuo IRL is in, not in good position right now. Cocoon is going to miss. That was actually really kind of scary because Vayne could have tumbled right into that and could have possibly tower dived right onto Yasuo. 
I think uh, Eddie was looking for the condemn onto the uh, tower base. You can find the stun right there, and, and Yasuo did a good job, or Yasuo IRL did a good job making sure that he was never lined up with it or parallel to it. Um, obviously, util utilizing the, the repel when Eddie tumbled forward to try to find the correct angle, so a uh, good read right there. And still looking at bottom lane, 142, 135. So both ADCs. There we go. Oh no! And that's gonna be locked up. Dean actually gonna have to use rocket jump, but it is not gonna be enough. In the top lane, also gonna try to go on to Dragon's Ascent and Last Breath. That is going to be the end of that. And that is two another two kills for these hoes. Ain't Laura still team or need to looking so well. Oh no. That, that's, uh, looking at it, at the top, you see Elise is coming down to help Misto Gun, but that's not going to be enough because down the bottom, you still got Vayne and Thresh going to come up. It, two, it's going to be a 3v2. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that Mist is already dead. <laughs> <laughs> but in the top lane over for middle lane and also uh, Kenex, they're going to try to go for that top tower. They should be able to get that uncontested, no problem. Again, the jungler's not over there. They had just killed the top laner. They have a wave behind them, and Yasuo is able to shove down towers quite effectively, especially having the attack um, A, damage from his half-complete eye edge, as well as the attack speed from his already complete shiv. That is true. So now it is three, so that is scary. And looking at Vayne, already has the Blade of the Ruin King, so that Life Shred is going. And there we go, Mr. Gun going to get condemned up against the wall. And the lockup by the Death Sentence is going to go down. That is going to be a double kill coming out from Vayne. Very nice. And this actually might be two towers. The tier one bottom and tier uh, two top. I don't know if they're going to trade bottom, but they're definitely going to push down this... Uh this top tower and Tristana is coming in Dean could possibly get the kill on this one is he gonna go for it no it's too tanky too tanky typically when you lose two fiddlesticks that's a warding issue um, the other thing that I will say is again Yasuo IRL gave a lot of power to his lanes and a lot of um, boost and early bonus to his lanes and they effectively didn't do anything with it or didn't transition or translate into any sort of advantage for the team uh as a whole so kind of disappointing there i feel like Yasuo irl uh played his early phase really well i think the only thing that i would have asked more from him is that he invaded fiddlesticks more Obviously, having the cocoon gives him the ability to uh, to cancel the drain, which is Fiddlestick's big draw for jungle, if he's ever found in a 1v1. So, you know, the tools were there. It's it just unfortunate that it didn't translate into anything. That said, you know, still have Tristana, still have Syndra, so the late game is possible, but a fed Yasuo is the perfect answer to a fed AD carry. And that is the stun, like you were just saying, that that is the 1v1 situation for Fiddle that is so so killer is if you actually do interrupt that heal it, it it's it's rough it really is and still everything is going down flashes are being used and the crow storm coming out the fear is not going to go down and their misto gun is going to get there we go last breath is going to go down fire thorns is going to drop like a rock in a lake and now it's going to be yasuo irl on the focus and I don't think he's gonna get anywhere. The damage um, from Demon and the, the placement, the fact that when he made that engagement, he got the last breath and then he immediately dashed out to the very edge of tower range, uh, used the wind wall to separate. <laughs> Kimmix trying to get the knock back there on the Dragon Descent, doesn't find it. He used the wind wall to separate effectively the, uh, the skirmish, the 3v3 and the tower. Oh, and a flash. Oh, okay, so it is a surrender. That is a GG, well played. Coming out from Team Juanito, and looks like just another kind of a replay of week one.